How many of you have seen the Cowboys? Not everybody. It is totally worth your watch, except I'll spoil, spoiler alert, John Wayne dies. Okay? But the Cowboys are a bunch of kids. Or it's a bunch of kids, a bunch of boys, like eight, nine, ten year old. I think the oldest is like 12. And uh, he somehow gets stuck with these kids and a, and a herd of cattle. And he has to get them, he has to train these boys to herd the cattle and to get them across to where he's going to take them to sell them, to, to the uh, market to sell them. And it's, it's a fascinating movie. It's a lot of fun. Um, John Williams wrote this right about the time that he was just come, just losing, dropping the knee from his name, when he was stopping from being John E. Williams, writing for shows like Gilligan's Island and Land of the Giants, um, and starting to uh, write some movie scores. And this is one of the earliest. And then after this, of course, the rest is history. He, the, the greatest composer of movie, uh, movie music, I think, who ever walked the planet. And since I'm talking about him, I, I think I should tell you my John Williams story. Um, you know that uh, he has written, he's 90 years old now, he turns 91 in February. Um, he has written a fanfare, Olympic uh, theme and fanfare for every Olympics that have landed on American soil since 1984. The first one he wrote, the most famous, was the one he wrote for uh, the uh, L.A. Olympics in 84. You hear that all the time during the Olympics. It just goes and goes. That's John Williams. The one he wrote for the Salt Lake Olympics, um, he immediately said, I want to write this for the two most iconic groups in Utah, the Utah Symphony and the Tabernacle Choir. So he wrote a bunch of uh, Latin words that sounded like different varieties of fruit. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the tab choir just did a lot of ooing and eyeing and singing. And the night of the recording, they, they did something really unusual. Instead of having the Utah Symphony meet and do the recording and the tab choir meet and do the recording, they brought everybody together, put the tab choir in the front seats of a Robinell Hall, put the Utah Symphony up on stage, and John Williams stood in the middle of us and conducted. Now, this was one of the points in my life where I was very <coughs> grateful to be short. <laughs> because I got to be on the front row. And I'm sitting there on the front row. Still, it makes me a little emotional because it was such a cool experience. I'm sitting there on the front row and out walks John Williams. And I'm going, oh, and my heart is in my chest. It's like, oh my gosh, that's John Williams. And he's going to be like 10 feet away from me. And he comes out on stage and the tab choir immediately and the Utah Symphony, everybody rousing, just beautiful, monstrous, monstrous standing ovation. And he just stands there with a smile on his face. And after we all shut up and sat down, he goes, this is the coolest moment. He says, I grew up listening to the Tabernacle Choir. My mom, my grandma, they used to always have the Tabernacle Choir on that little Victrola radio um, every Sunday morning and listen to the Tab Choir. And he says, I grew up listening to the music and the spoken word of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And I cannot believe that I am now here standing in front of you. And I go, wait a minute. <laughs> You're John Williams. <laughs> it, and, and it was so cool. And we had wonderful, wonderful things. So he came back out for the opening ceremonies, which, of course, we had made, already made the recording. So the opening ceremonies, we all just mouthed the words. As a matter of fact, I thought it was really cool. It was so cold that a French horn player was blowing through the horn and making steam come out the other end of the <laughs> um, And all of the, all of the stringed, in, stringed instruments were student model string instruments that were just purchased for that purpose. And then they were sold to the different schools around the state after. Because Utah Symphony players were not going to bring <laughs> get their good instruments out for that. And, uh, but it was, it was a hoot. And we, did, we finished it. And that all happened. And Craig Jessup happened to be talking to John Williams and as he was getting ready to go he says hey we're gonna do the we're gonna do the uh, uh, call of the champions on the broadcast on Sunday morning any chance we could get you to come and conduct it and John looks at him he says John looked at me and he says yes but don't tell my manager <laughs> <laughs> and he came and he and he conducted the call of the champions on the broadcast and then ran straight to the airport caught his plane out back out to California um, what a gracious humble incredible human being and, and I came out of that and I went, wow. And if you ever get a chance to see him like at the Academy Awards or something, see how excited he is for everybody else when they get Academy Awards. He's won more than anybody anyway, so. 
Um, it's just really, really awesome. What a great human being, and obviously a fantastic composer. All right.